Namaste and welcome to the sixth edition of the Ketevan Sacred Music Festival. This year the festival will host an online edition so as to respect the safe norms of the ongoing pandemic. Ketevan Seim has always been to celebrate interreligious coexistence by putting together soulful Western, Eastern sacred music programs from various traditions across the globe. Accordingly, this sixth edition will offer concerts, talks, interviews, short in different heritage monuments in eight countries, such as India, the US, the UK, Argentina, Portugal, among others. We are honored to collaborate with over 100 artists and speakers, and 16 productions that were specially recorded for this festival edition. Our three-day program includes wonderful concerts, such as the monks of the Tibetan Drepung Monastery in India, or Western sacred choral music by the LA Choral Lab from Los Angeles, California, Drupa chant from noted classical singers, Orthodox chants at the Caucasian Mountains in Tbilisi, Georgia, or Portuguese sacred music live at the site of Quinta de Regaleira in Lisbon. Plus, we will have music specially written for this edition and performed by the Nightingale Ensemble at Harvard University and the Goa University Choir at the stunning UNESCO Heritage Site of Old Goa in India and the marvelous headquarters of our festival. In these times of social distance, an uncertain future, an ongoing crisis, we believe it's essential to rediscover the value and the richness of the sacred, the incorruptible, the eternal. This is what our festival seeks to recreate, an atmosphere and a soundscape where the sacredness of sound leads us to rediscover the imperishable in the eternal, to enable us to find that eternity lives in our own voices. As a first performance, we will have the Sakyoba Ensemble performing Georgian sacred music from Tbilisi, Georgia. We hope you enjoy the festival.
Namaste. We are in the Museum of Christian Art in the beautiful town of Old Goa, or Velia Goa as it is called in the local dialect Konkani. Goa is on the west coast of India and is known not only for its spellbinding beauty of its beaches, but also for a set of religious monuments located here that were declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in the year 1986. Built between the 16th and 17th centuries by the Portuguese, these shrines are the reason Goa is often called Rome of the Orient. This historic town played a crucial role in the dissemination of Western art forms in Asia. The second concert we are presenting today is performed at the Arboretum of the Harvard University in Boston by the Nightingale Vocal Ensemble. They are presenting a piece titled The Divine in Nature with music specially composed for the festival. Sit back and be mesmerized. Hello, my name is Laura Nevitt. And my name is Ben Perry. And we're the co-artistic directors of Nightingale Vocal Ensemble. And we're here in the Arnold Arboretum of Harvard University in Boston, Massachusetts to film our concert, The Divine in Nature. The Divine in Nature is a choral song cycle that takes listeners on a journey through Earth's ordinary yet exquisite cycle of light. 
From the light of day to the dark of night, each piece represents a landmark along the way. The order of the cycle reflects a logical flow through time. Day leads to afternoon, which becomes evening, which fades to night. The cycle finishes with Robert Frost's poem, Nothing Gold Can Stay, emphasizing the ever-changing dynamics of cosmic forces in our world, which reflect the impermanent, precious nature of our human lives. And on behalf of the entire group, we would like to thank Ketavon Sacred Music Festival for inviting us to participate in their 2021 virtual edition. We hope you enjoy these five settings of poets from the United States, set to music by members of our own ensemble.
nature's first screen is gone. The hardest you to hold. Her early leaves are fallen, but only so. We are now presenting the Big Ocean Cantata Project. This piece, premiered in 2019, was composed to honor the visit of His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, to the Goa University. Today's performance is in three parts, an introduction to the mantra, Om Mani Padme Hum, by the abbot of Sarah May Monastery, followed by the performance of the cantata by the Goa University Choir, and finally, an interview and a performance by the Tibetan Buddhist monks at the Drepung Monastery. Enjoy this ancient chant. It is uh, my great honor and uh, pleasure uh, to say a few words uh, uh, in this musical uh, festival. Ancient Indian spiritual traditions have a, a very unique uh, practice, the teachings are mainly focused on how to develop inner non-violence, ahimsa, dealing with our inner difficulties such as anger, hatred, jealousy, envy, self-grasping, self-centered attitude, and so forth. One famous well-known mantra which is quite often called, you know, the Sungha uh, Yigetukba, in Tibetan. That means mantra of six syllables. Om, Ma, Ni, Bet, Me, Hum. Om, it is the symbol of our current impure body, speech and mind, as well as pure 
enlightened beings, body, speech, and mind. And the next two syllables, ma, ni, uh, refers to jewel or precious. Symbolically, the jewel or precious eliminates external poverty, similar to that. Love, compassion, altruism, these inner jewels really cures our inner poverty. They will cure our uh, inner deep-rooted hatred, anger, jealousy, envy, and grasping, self-grasping. Bet man. Bet refers to lotus. Lotus. Generally speaking, lotus are born in a muddy water or in a lake. Though they're born, they grow in a muddy water. When they come up, open the buds, then there's a purity. Very pure, clean lotus flower. No stains, no muds are attached. Similar to that, when the wisdom, wisdom realizing the nature of the reality, such as nature of dukkha, suffering, nature of origins of dukkha, and the nature of cessation of dukkha, and path that leads to that cessation. When we understand these four truths in our lives, that's the wisdom. So, Padme represents wisdom. So, then the last syllable, which is Hum, it has a meaning of to hold, to experience. The meaning here is to experience or to hold within ourselves the union of compassion and wisdom. Holding the union of compassion and wisdom then purifies our impure body, speech and mind and that transform into pure enlightened beings, body, speech and mind. So when the individuals really start to experience love, compassion and wisdom, at that stage there is no sort of individuality. There's no difference of language, culture, or the background there. Similar to that, the music has a unique qualities to go beyond the nationalities, language, different concepts, different philosophies, and so forth. I'm really, really happy and my great pleasure to introduce this unique music during this music festival. Enjoy, enjoy, and enjoy.
Japung Long Seling Monastery in Tibet, which was established in 1416, was re-established in India in the late 60s. In Tibet at the Japung Monastery, at one time it was recorded more than 10,000 monks. And currently we have more than 3,000 monks. There are some monasteries whose focus is on the rituals and ceremonies, and other monasteries about the studying the Buddhist philosophy. And Jabung Lao Seleng Monastery is mainly focusing on the studies of the Buddhist philosophy, and it takes at least 17 years to complete our monastic education. The purpose of religion, whatsoever religion, it is good to make the better world. Interfaith dialogue is very, very important. Otherwise, if we sh shut down all the doors, then there is no way to understand others. From the you know very ancient time, in those great Nalanda universities and Takshashila, there was a debate among the Buddhist as well as with the non-Buddhist as well. Today is actually the very last activity of the year of the monastery. So tonight, what we're going to see is the mass debate. <laughs> While debating, it might seem like very kind of what you call the word, ferocious, but you know, it is not for that. What the monastery in the monks, what they're debating is not, you know, to, to win and to lose. This is to understand. Buddha's teaching in two words. The practice is the practice of compassion. And what is the philosophy? Is the, the philosophy of interdependent. So why we practice compassion? What is the reason behind that? Every being, every creature, they all want happiness and don't want the tiny suffering. If you want the happiness, then you need to cultivate the cause that makes 
you have been. For that, you know, it is reasonable to, to be compassionate and to be kind to others. So if we do good, we are going to have a good result. If we do bad, then we'll have a, you know, some negative result. That's the law of the karma, law of causality. In the modern, modern world, people seem, you know, much stressed and depressed with their work. You know. When we are not able to control our mind, right, that makes us, you know, the stress. We are too much self, our own self-centeredness, not thinking about the others, you know.
Those of you from around the world who have just joined us, the artistic director of the Ketavan Sacred Music Festival, Dr. Santiago Lusardi Girelli, spoke a little while ago to welcome artists from Georgia, the United States of America, and the Tibetan Buddhist monks from India. It is now my pleasure to invite Dr. Colin Porter from Liverpool, UK, to show us how the pipe organ is capable of producing the most celestial and soothing harmonies, as well as triumphant proclamations. Unlike most musical instruments, the pipe organ is commonly defined by the place where it is often played, the church. And people seem to think of organists as reclusive creatures in the lofts of basilicas and cathedrals. Dr. Porter will dispel that myth. here to Mosty Hill Parish Church in Liverpool in England. My name is Colin Porter and I am the organist of this church. And I'm delighted to have been asked to take part in the Catavan World Sacred Music Festival. And I shall be playing the organ of this church built by Henry Willis in 1874 and showing off some of its magnificent tonal resources. The first piece I'm going to play is my Siegfried Kargelert, and it's one of his most famous pieces, Praise the Lord with Drums and Cymbals, and it shows off the very grand nature of the organ.
The second piece I'm going to play is by Lefebvre Valley, a French organist, and this is a piece called Elevation, which would be normally played during Mass or Communion. And this particular piece shows off one of our very beautiful solo flute stops. Thank you. 